Hello friends, Gerard Scarpacy here. Today we are at Goldcomb. It's an awesome salon owned by my friend Adam down here in San Diego. And we're with a, a very old friend and longtime Hairbrain community member, Todd De Silva. Todd's going to be sharing some of his cutting skills and of course we're always looking for questions. Anything you guys want to talk about, go ahead and type it in there. I'll be looking for questions. Fielding them for Todd. Todd's beautiful model. Tell me your name again. Annalise. Annalise. Todd's beautiful model. Yeah. Annalise having a nice little change today. So we're excited to see this Todd take it away. Tell us what you got going on. Cool. Hi guys. Uh, like Jared said, my name is Todd De Silva. We're we're here in North Park, California, at our buddy shop at Goldcomb. And right now I'm working on my lovely model Annalise. And uh, right now I'm just taking horizontal subsections. Everything's being elevated to a stationary guide. Just need to get my gold comb. I dropped it. Police. Uh -huh. And so we're working horizontal subsections. Everything's being elevated to a stationary guide. And the goal here is to just maintain her length, but also create these fun internal layers that's going to work for, for Annalise. It's very fun. I'm just rotating her head slightly so I don't have to struggle too much with, with my elevation. And yeah really digging these types of haircuts at the moment. So, you know, getting back into these really layered looks, kind of typically what people call shag. I mean, yeah. it's fun to see that happening. I've always been a fan of taking weight out of hair and giving it some life. Yeah. Um, so you started off with kind of, would you say like uh, there's intent to where this first parting went? Yeah. So Talk to us a little bit. I'm going to turn a little to the side yeah. so we can see where that first parting went. So the first thing I did was just took my comb here, and right where the head leaves the comb, I've taken a, a little subsection right in front of that apex, and I took a diagonal radial section to just behind the ear. And I've been calling this kind of the headband shag. My good friend Ariana that I work with, she's been uh, training me on this haircut with the razor. Yes. Yeah. And I thought to myself, it'd be really cool if I did this haircut with the scissors, and just to get a little bit more strength into the overall shape. So the idea is you come in, you kind of make this headband section, yep. you put in a guideline in the center, it determines the length of the fringe, and that would be your shortest layer? Yeah, so that's kind of how I how I determined so, where I started. So the shorter that is, the more dramatic exactly. it, it's going to go, yeah? Yeah, I think at the moment, you know, you can go from shag to mullet real quick. It's yeah. like, a, you know, quick little jump over that line. So, and that's one of the things when I did my consultation with Annalise, you know exactly what she would she would like to see and suitable haircut for her. It seems like that cutting angle is a shorter at the face, longer at the crown. Does that make a difference? Exactly. So this is our this is a round shape, and it's going to push that weight away from the face, and it really opens this up. So it shows off my model's cheekbones, all those lovely features that we want to showcase. All right, want to give some shout outs. Yeah. We've got. Our good friend Stevie Smith is watching. Hey Stevie. Up, Stevie. Um, we've got Dawn Shank. Hey Dawn, how are you? Jeffrey Lynn from Whoop Whoop here in San Diego. Our buddy Wayne Woodruff is watching. Hey Wayne. Uh, Judy Sheen is glad she caught a live from Canada. Oh, cool. Awesome, glad to have you here. Uh, getting some weekend lives in. And uh, guys, again, if you have any questions, um, please share them and I'll, I'll ask Todd and then we'll have a little repartee about the questions. Can you give us a little recap of that section that you just cut? Yeah. So after I've sectioned out this little headband section, I took horizontal sections starting at the very top. This is where my client or my model loves to section her hair off. And I just took horizontal sections all the way down past the parietal ridge. Everything was direct to the first guide. So that would be considered a stationary guide. And anytime we decided to do a stationary guide, the goal is to preserve. So we want to preserve this outline or this perimeter, which is why we chose to overdraft everything to the middle. Do you ever sometimes go past the middle? Like if you want to over-exaggerate it? Oh, yeah. Or, yeah, I've been doing that a little bit lately with, uh, with these shapes. So you can get even shorter yeah. and then more dramatic. Like starting on base, but then starting to drag the hair more over and over past the center. Yeah, I, I think the beauty of technique is that you're able to play with all different types of elevation, different types of length. That's the goal of a, of a hair cutter is to just work work and kind of play with, with what works for you. So the first thing I'm doing right now is I've taken a horizontal section and I'm going to reestablish that first guide, which is right here in the middle. I've changed my body position now and the, the, the reason for this is to just stay consistent with my elevation. And I also want to see my guide. So since I've, I've 
change my body position, I'm on the client's left hand side, and I want to maintain this angle that I've created at the beginning. So it kind of works best for you with this to stand on the opposite side, really protect that length? Yeah, it's like, I don't think there's any wrong way to do it. Uh, yeah. You know, sometimes I decide to stay on that side and kind of push. But I find that when I'm teaching this type of haircut and I do that, a lot of times the person learning tends to not overdraft enough. Yeah. So it's a safety valve. Yeah, it's just kind of help me out and be consistent. All right, here's some love coming in from Amy Brown. She says, beautiful model. Oh, I think we all agree. And it's going to look even better when, with this. She's going to look even better with this fun haircut. Yeah. We've got Jerry McDougal, our good buddy watching. No Lisa Ding. She didn't miss the back yet. Todd is starting up here with this uh, headband section. And the back will come in second. So yep. stick around and you can see what happens. Yeah, and you know what, on this side, since I consider this side to be a little bit more difficult for me, I like to use the mirror. So I have my model positioned here, and I think it's important that as we're lifting this, that I, I'm using that mirror to just check my balance. I think sometimes people, right-handed people, will find the side more difficult because you're cutting from long to short. Yeah, it's kind of, I have to kind of lift my shoulder a little bit. It's, it's, uh, it's a little bit uncomfortable, but we kind of, kind of have to fight through that a little bit. Yeah. By the way, speaking of Stevie Smith, I don't know if they're still on from Chicago, but we have Katie here. I used to work oh, with Stevie. Yeah. Come I think on Stevie over, Katie. Still here. She said hi. <laughs> Katie's here. Say hi to Stevie. Katie's a good friend of ours, and she's here hanging out. So. Worked with Stevie Smith in Chicago and Smith Davis Salon, yep. one of Chicago's finest. Yeah. Now what about tension here? Are you uh, really kind of putting a lot of tension on the hair? Is it more light-handed? Well, tension's really important. I'm using the fine side of my comb, and I'm really making sure that that's pretty strong tension. If I want a clean, clean haircut, I think it's really important that I, I focus on that. Uh, Sandra Lynn Bruno Soderquist is asking about your overdirection. Are you going all the way to the center or just the previous? So I'm, I'm bringing everything into the middle. So this is a stationary guideline. So everything, sometimes I even like to talk in numbers. So this is like going all to one. So it's like one is your base and then two to one, three to one, yep. four to one, five to one. Exactly. Stationary right down the center. And just can you briefly describe why you chose that? So the reason why we've chosen a stationary guide is because the goal here is to preserve the outline shape. So if we want to preserve this, we need to lift, lift away from it. Over direct so, away from where you want yeah. to keep length. Yeah. So my elevation is coming all up here, and I, I don't know if you guys notice, but I, I always tilt that that head towards me, so I don't have to really give you kind of a flat plane to work with. Exactly. Our buddy Jay Mahmoud is watching. Hey Jay. Jay recently filmed a cutting class for us, a men's cutting class oh, cool. called uh, Bespoke Men's Grooming, available on our HP Live. Nice. Not to interrupt, but can you can you fill us in on what you're doing right here? Yeah, okay. Uh, so at the moment, I'm, I'm cross-checking my work. So I was taking horizontal sections. So right now, what I'm gonna do is take a vertical subsection. Really important that when you guys cross-check, that you hold it at the same elevation. So since I overdirected everything to the middle and everything was up, that's how I'm kind of checking my work. And I can go ahead and dust it a little bit just to make sure it's clean. If we take a moment to cross-check, it's really gonna help you out in the long run. Kind of detail what's going on. It's looking pretty good. Yep, all kinds of support. Jesse Gaines and Stevie Smith is still with us. Oh, what's up, Jesse? Yeah, Todd, no pressure, but you got a big audience here. Yes, wow. people are into the shade. Not only a big audience, but a good audience. We have some of our you know, top community members, great hairdressers watching. Uh, if you're just joining us, I'm here with Todd DeSilver. Uh, we're here in San Diego at my buddy Adam uh, Marino Salon. And uh, this is beautiful model, Annalise, getting this lovely shag technique. Again, guys, any questions? And also give us a shout out. Let us know where you're watching from. We're in San Diego today. Kelly and I actually were all at the beach today, at a beach party. Uh, and we came right here to, to get you guys some late afternoon education. Let us know if you're enjoying that. I think Todd's doing an incredible job. Great teacher here. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to go ahead and connect the back into the front. And so I've, I've taken down my section and I've divided it, central parting, all the way down to the nape area. 
Now the goal is I'm gonna take diagonal back subsections and I'm gonna pivot around, but it's really important that your body stays stationary. I don't think I could say this enough, but your lower half is really gonna dictate the overall balance and shape of the haircut. So that means that I, I set little markers in the room as I work to ensure that I don't start changing my, my body position. So at the moment, my position is gonna be right at the corner of my mama's eye. So I'm gonna come right here. And I'm gonna bring this forward. And I want a small little subsection from the front. So it's gonna serve as my guide, my visual. Amy Brown is wondering if you ever do this using point cutting or do you always just maybe point cut afterwards? That's a great question. So I, I think it just depends on the result that you're looking for. I could definitely come through and do more of a pointing technique, um, but I'm opting to come in and create a lot more strength in my, my overall shape. So I'm coming through a lot more blunt and then I'll do some detailing at the end. I'll do some point cutting. Kel, can we get a really good shot of the way Todd holds his scissor for this because it's, uh, it's a very unique way of doing this. I think it's kind of progressive. Can you explain that little hand position? It's a little different maybe from the standard hand positions. Let's get a good shot of it. Yeah. And then show us what you're doing. Uh, so I'm real big on not overexerting the wrist as you're working. So I find that if I decided to kind of crank my wrist like this and cut, I guess I could cut palm to palm, but that might take me away from what I'm doing. So instead, I, I think it's just a habit thing. I, I tend to tuck my thumb in, mm -hmm. and it just helps me control the scissor and not have to crank my wrist. Yeah, I think, you know, it's something I've seen develop over the past decade or so that, you know, back in the day when I was training, I never really saw anyone do that. Then all of a sudden, we started seeing it in the past 10 years or so, and I, I think uh, for a lot of people, it's been a big benefit. Yeah. Even like when cutting outlines, like one length lines and stuff, this way you don't have to like overexert your elbows. Exactly. Uh, Sherry, I'm gonna get a have a hard. If I get this last name wrong, don't hate me. <laughs> back ooze, back ooze. Sherry back ooze is wondering what kind of scissors you're using today. So these are 5.5 coho. Is that how you pronounce it? Coho. Coho. Sorry. Um, scissor. Real simple scissor. Um, Great handle on it, really sharp from HP Pro. Yeah, this is a great brand, guys. They're a Japanese brand. Um, every time I go over to Japan, every hairdresser has a pair. It's one of the most popular brands there. So we started offering them on, on our HP Pro store. So if you go to hairbrain.pro, you can see our selection of Kuho. We've also got B-Max, Mizutani's, we've got some Yasakas, and of course we've got our own HP Pro brand. And last thing I wanna say about that is we have a great payment plan. So you get yourself a great pair of scissors, range anywhere from $300 up to $1,000, and you can pay monthly to pay those off. So check it out at hairbrain.pro. Joel Torres is watching. Hey, Joel. So I'm quickly running out of hair to cut, and that's, to me, that, that's a good thing, because the goal here is to have the weight pushed away from the face and preserve. But there is gonna be a moment when I'm gonna come through vertically in the back and just release some of that tension. So not a lot of getting cut, but that's, that's okay. We're having so this after you did your kind of uh, headband section, you started yep. to move shitty sections pivoted around the crown? Yeah, I'm pivoting sections right here at the apex. And then how did you choose where you wanted to over direct to? Did you bring, you bring it all the way to, just re-explain re that. Yeah, so right now, again, I'm still working a stationary glide. So everything's being pulled to a stationary point. Uh, I'm continuing to cut more palm to palm, and my elevation, not exactly at a 90, I'm a little bit below 90, so it is gonna have that kind of strength in the shape. It just gets heavier and heavier towards the back, yeah, so you don't end up really thin and light. Yeah, and we got this yeah, really, really awesome texture. You really the outline nicely. It's got a very rock and roll feeling, but yeah. you didn't make a big hole in front of the ear, which is great. No, we've maintained all this length here. Not much mulletude there, but a lot of shagitude. <laughs> It's a fine line, fine line. So now I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on this side. Annalise has beautiful hair. How would you describe her hair texture and density? And how did that affect your choices here? Yeah, so I always consider... That's a great shot. Look, look at how good that looks. Just have a quick look. Oh, yeah, yeah. cool. Uh, I always consider density, texture, wave pattern uh, when I'm determining length and how big of sections I'm taking. I always 
I always consider. So her hair texture is pretty, pretty average. Density is also the same. So the good thing about Annalise is that she looks good in anything. You know, I, I've made it easy for you. She makes it so easy. I, I've cut her hair from a pixie into shags and bob. She's had every, every haircut under the rainbow. And I, I think this is probably the best look that she's had. Couple questions coming in. One from Meredith Long. Uh, would you cut this on longer, I'm sorry, on thicker hair? And if so, how would you change your technique or would you do it exactly the same? I would do the same. I, I think the only thing I would kind of change is the size of sections that I'm working with. I'm going to turn you around a little, Todd, so we yep. can see that section in from the back. I think that's a good angle. And maybe you can just show us with your yep. hands like exactly what's happening here. Yeah. I think what's really important also is think about your elevation. So the higher I lift this, the softer the result. So if somebody had thicker, more dense hair, I might even lift, start cutting the top of the fingers, really lift my elevation. How did you, you, you just moved from one side to the other, how did you maintain the same length? Did you, did you take a piece from the previously cut or? Yes, so every time I come through on the opposite side, I always grab a small little bit from the side that I continue to work on. That way I always have consistency with what I'm doing. So I pull the piece, here's my guide right here in the middle, and that's kind of my beginning point, and then I'm traveling out. So that I always call it my point of origin, cutting to my point of destination. Sharon Dove Sweat uh, would love to see this cut on curly hair. Would, you, would this technique work well on curly hair? That's my favorite haircut. <laughs> on curly hair, wavy texture hair, I think it just looks really rad. Um, I feel really comfortable cutting with a razor with curly hair with this type of haircut. Um, in fact, Ariana does an amazing version of this curly hair when she was in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And it was probably my favorite look. Yeah, I've seen the photos. They look fantastic. Yeah. If you're just joining us, we're here in San Diego. We're at Goldcomb. Do you call it salon or barbershop? Barbershop. Goldcomb Barbershop, our buddy Adam owns it. He let us uh, come in here with Todd De Silva, who's cutting today. Yep. Great educator, um, and he's sharing this shag technique, yep. uh, combination of fun techniques. I want to give some shout outs. My, my buddy Nick Berardi is watching, oh, hey, one Nick. of my original mentors at Vidal Sassoon. And I, I, I think you guys might have worked together yeah. at one point. Greg May is watching, another old friend. Jeremy Hickson, what's up, Jeremy? What up, Jeremy? We're casual today, Jeremy. We just came off the beach. We're in San Diego. <laughs> no blazer but, today. You know, this is Beach Town, USA. So we just came off the beach, but we came right down to the barber shop. We're trying to fit in. We're working with our buddy Todd. So if you guys have any questions or you want to give us a shout out, now's the time to do it. I feel like I look so non california <laughs> That total opposite. You need some flip flops. Yeah. No. Jokes. You jokes. Well, I took my flip flops off and put jokes, shoes on jokes. at least. I figured I'll be, I'll be professional if I put it. I, I hit my toes. So here, here's the one thing for me that I feel is really important when we're doing hair behind the chair. Is that it doesn't matter what it looks like on the way out the door. It matters more about what it looks like when it comes back to you after six weeks or eight weeks. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take care of this little middle section. Because I over everything to the front. It's made it pretty heavy here in the back. Might it even leave a corner there? Yep. So it's a little peak of weight right here in the middle. And what I want to do is just release some of that weight. So I'm going to take a vertical section right here. Everything is going to be elevated to a 90. And I'm going to use this piece right here at the crown to just continue this line. So let's see. We had a little love for our good buddy, Ricardo Dennis. Uh, Gretchen Almov said she learned that similar hand position from Ricardo back in 2000. Glad to hear it. Yeah, Ricardo's definitely a big holder of that hand position. I, I don't know what to call it exactly, but it's, you know. Some kind of invertedness. Yeah, it's, it's a little different. Again, if you miss what we're talking about, the good news is once these videos are over, you can always go back and rewatch them at any time. Uh, all you got to do is go to the Hairbrain Facebook page, click on videos, and you can watch any of these videos over and over again. So there's just a little tiny corner right here, and I'm just, just taking it away, and it's just going to create a little bit extra movement here in the back. 
Now, what if her hair was much longer and you wanted to keep the outline much longer? It's been a few questions about that. Yeah, I, again, I, I can't stress technique enough. So it, if, I, if I'm dealing with a lot of length, all I gotta do is use this, use this elbow. So if I really want to create this, get that length, just get that elbow up, and we're gonna go ahead and continue. Do you ever try maybe to sometimes like disconnect the outline? Like you can take like a two inch like curve section, yeah. maybe flat braid it to the head. Yeah. And then you could even have this many layers, but it almost has that look of like extensions, but on real hair. Yeah, you can just play with it, have fun. Shout out to Frank Mussolino. Hey Always Frank Mussolino. We're on the West Coast right now, Frank, but we'll be back on the East Coast soon. So you, you basically move through all of these back panels taking out this corner. Yeah, but everything is being pulled to the center again. So we're still maintaining the length and it's just taking away this little additional weight. And it's, it's not a lot. So you're bringing everything back to one. Everything's coming to one and that's it. That's it. So beautifully layered, lots of internal layering, creating that kind of shag feeling but maintaining the outline. Yeah, so that, that's pretty much it. I think what, what I'll do real quick is just do another quick little cross-check. Talk, explain to us, you know, the whole concept behind cross-checking. I think, uh, you know, some people get it and some people don't. Tell us your philosophy and your approach to it. My philosophy is that if we want to charge a lot of money for our haircuts, we have to ensure that what we're doing is, is balanced and that we didn't miss anything. I think a lot of times we'll have our clients go check out at the front and we realize that one side's a little bit longer than the other, and we have two options. We either tell them to come back in the chair and fix it, or we just hope that they don't see when they get home. But then they go home and they check their haircut, and then they go to Yelp because it wasn't perfect. Yeah. So instead, if we take a moment to just cross-check her work while she's in the chair, we avoid all that. So this is just making sure that what we're doing and you know, even if, even if you got it perfect the first time, cross checking, it, especially at these kind of elevations, it just adds a little bit of extra lightness. Yeah. Like just that dusting that you're doing there, um, even though it didn't like it wasn't wrong, it didn't need to be fixed. Mm -hmm. But that checking just like it refines it. It just kind of it's like taking the grain of the hair to the next level. Yeah. And I think our clients appreciate it. you know us going through it, making sure it's perfect. Yeah. So that's pretty much it. <laughs> awesome. So I, I guess what's all left to do is just uh, let's go ahead and we'll do a quick little dry on it. The beauty of cuts today is everybody's loving that whole lived in kind of easy style look. So that's that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. So talk to us a little bit about styling and then uh, yep. we'll see if there'll be any, do you think there'll be any dry cutting or anything afterwards? Yeah, I'm going to do a little bit of detailing just, just in this little cool. fringe area. So I want to make sure that that's perfect. I might come through and do, do some point cutting, different refinement. Awesome. So let's get some real product quick. in there and see yeah. what you got in store for us. All right. So guys, Todd's going to get uh, Annalise's hair ready. Oh, I want to get my hands in there and see how those layers work because it feels amazing. Beautiful. Let's see that face there too. Yes. There we go. So Todd's going to get some products in here, do some styling, and then do some final cutting. So you might think it's over, but it's not because some of these final moments are really the difference between good and great. So let's see what you have in mind for us. Yeah. What are you working into the hair? So it, this is a uh, this is our product from Unite called Conundrum. Conundrum, yeah. I like that. It's like a like an evil super villain. Conundrum. It's like this fun little paste that, that we're going to work in through the hair, and it's going to create a, a little bit of fullness into the hair, a little bit of texture, and then I'm also going to come through with our product called Beach Day. It smells you great. Just, you guys are just at the beach. Yeah, it smells like they, they have a very beachy smell, which I like. So both of these products are designed to bring out texture, wave, movement. Exactly. Fantastic. So just working that through. And then we're just going to finger dry it. Kind of just a little weird just saying finger dry it, but yeah. how else to say? Yeah, hand drying, just getting in I'm there. Just going to finger it. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, even this has a technique to it, right? So, yeah. it, it feels like you're getting in closer to the scalp at first. Can you explain why? You do it as loud as you can. <laughs> so, I'm wrap drying, but just with my hands. So, coming through, I'm not doing lots of this. I don't want it to be a big old frizz ball. 
So I still have a, a method to my madness, and I'm just gonna wrap it a little bit. So you kind of grab through with your fingers, pushing yeah. it towards the face. And again, even little things like this, as someone who's traveled to so many salons, I think so many hairdressers are afraid to do something like this. They almost always feel more comfortable pulling out a brush yeah. because it's kind of what they know. And now we're at a point in fashion where these naturally styled looks are probably more popular than really blown out looks. Yeah. So the technique, so even that little twisting that you're doing there, what are you trying to create? I just want that lived in kind of messy look. So I'm just twisting, running that blow dryer through those ends. I mean, it, it's really setting. Anytime that you put a shape into the hair and add heat to it, so by twisting it with your finger like that, you're making a little bit of a wave in the hair. Yep. As long as you get the heat on it, let it cool down, it'll put some bend into the ends of the hair. Yep. I always think about like how people are going to style their own hair at home. A lot of them don't even own brushes and things like that. So, oh, yeah. so how can we show them to recreate a look but make it easy? Yeah, I think you know a lot of a lot of clients and guests that I've encountered. You know, sometimes you feel like, oh, you know, I can never make it look the way that my hairdresser can. Yeah. And I think sometimes that could be a bad reflection on the haircut or on the whole experience, you know, where if you can kind of make it in a way that they can actually do it, believe it or not, sometimes that puts more value on the haircut. You're like, yeah, I pay more for my haircut because all I have to do is run my fingers through it and it looks good. Yeah. It's a different kind of philosophy. Nice to see Todd Allen watching us today. Uh, another old friend, nice to see your name here in the feed. Todd, we're in San Diego with Todd De Silva. Oh, hey. Yeah, Todd's uh, been sharing with us this kind of shag technique, beautiful customized layering on Annalise, doing a little hand drying, and now we go into the final. Yeah, Vicky Cooper just tuned in and didn't see it from the beginning, but guys, just so you know, anytime you want, all you have to do is go to Hairbrain on Facebook, click the video button. We've got almost 400 or over 400 of these lives with some of the best hairdressers from all over the world. And not just famous people, people that are just great hairdressers, great educators. We've shared with a lot of people, so you can really spend the next year, you can watch a video every day for the next 400 days. And I guarantee you, you'd be a better hairdresser at the end of it. And now you're in that library, Tom. Yeah, I feel really honored. Uh, I've been a part of Airbrain since its inception. Definitely. Like in 2009. 100%. So I feel pretty honored. I've seen this you know, Airbrain develop and progress in such an amazing community. So just being involved is really important for me. Lots of love coming in. Lisa Drinks loves it. Skylar Marsh is watching. Another longtime hair brain friend. Uh, Michelle Sanford says, looking so pretty. Johnny Garcia from Katy, Texas loves it. Watching live from Boston, Anna Costa. So guys, you know, again, now I can see some color peeking through here. And actually it's phenomenal on the screen. Uh, was that intentional or is that just some old color that Annalise had? <laughs> was that color I did or are you going to color? Yeah, there you go. So it was very intentional. Yeah, yeah. it was intentional. So. All right, here's an interesting question for you, Todd. Okay. Lauren uh, Schiarata, what age bracket is most suitable for this haircut? What do you think about that one? That's an interesting question. Yeah. Uh, I think any age bracket. I think if um, if the person has the personality and, and uh, has it in them to rock a certain haircut like this, yeah. I've seen old grandmas rock a shag versus yeah. young. I'd say certain shapes are timeless, you know, bobs, yeah. pixies, shags, you know, I think, obviously you can hear it one way or the other, but, uh, yeah, I think if you're, if you're a good hairdresser, I mean, you can make anybody look good. There you go. So, yeah, people always say, will this suit me, suit my face, and a good yeah. hairdresser will make that style suit you. That's what it's really all about. Yeah. Whether it's a shorter fringe or a longer fringe or more layers or less layers to change the shape, that's what it's all about. So nice natural dry, just using the fingers. The product worked really well. Looks like you're going in with a third product. Yeah, this is our, our liquid volume product. So this is just going to help to create a little bit of extra texture my favorite product that we have. They all smell good, that's very beachy, which I like. <laughs> now, all right, now for some dry cutting. And I, you know, this is a big thing that 
I think people maybe have a little challenge understanding, so give us everything you got here. Yeah. So, in all my classes, the first thing I ask them is, what do you feel is trending at the moment? And what do you think is kind of one of those fun things that we love to do? And I, I've been getting a lot of curtain bangs or kind of like the, the fringe that kind of sweeps off to the side. So I thought it'd be fun to just showcase a little bit of that. It's definitely major trending, the curtain. Yeah. yeah and it, there's even like pixie versions now where it's a really quite a short pixie, but with a curtain. You know, we used to kind of call it an A bang, opposite from a V bang, but it's evolved. I love this curtain. It's got that very yeah. French Bridget Bordeaux quality to it. So what I'm doing now is I'm just taking this little section out. I'm just going to remove this little corner. Let's see where that's going to fall. So you're just kind of taking all that hair and, and again, cutting that center piece. Yep. I'm assuming there'll be a lot of over direction again now. Yeah. It, all this haircut is pretty much sectioned to a focal point. So everything's being brought to the center. I think it's a kind of an easy haircut to follow. And yeah, I mean, I, I'm a big fan of, of easy. It doesn't mean that, you know, um, complicated haircuts aren't always better, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I think sometimes when you're working behind the chair and especially doing 10, 15 clients a day, things that are simple but done really well, yeah. I think sometimes hold up a little bit better than really complicated haircuts. Don't get me wrong, I, I love a good technical complicated haircut, but in the end, the goal for the hairdressers is to make money in the salon. Yeah. And I think if we're able to, to have a little bit of both, that's good. I notice you change combs. Can you tell us your thinking there? Yeah, so I use these tools just like I use these. So now that I'm working dry, I want a looser comb, try wider teeth, and it just helps me to manipulate and hold that hair a little better. So basically, after layering, post-layering here, you're going on the front edge and the bang or the fringe area. Yeah. Uh, cutting, would you say the line is square or do you feel like it's a little bit short to long? I would say it's it's working a little bit more convex. convex. So I'm working with the contour of her head, and it just lays a little bit nicer. And I think what I'm gonna do is just do a little bit more freehand out here. So freehand means you're not gonna like hold it technically. No, I'm just gonna pick this up into the comb. Here's a nice uh, comment for you. Uh, James or Neil says best breakdown of his haircut I've ever seen. Oh, You'll nice. Use it this coming week. Nice. Send us a picture. Yeah, let's see a picture. Hashtag hairbrained and tag Todd to Silva. Cool. Give him a shout out. So basically almost like scissor over comb, holding it over the comb. And, and what are you trying to accomplish there? So I just want to help create a little bit more detail around the face. But I still, again, I want that lived in look. So it's really just pointing and kind of playing a little bit with it and kind of seeing how things are going to start to develop. So you just lift it out and just kind of refine the angle that's already there? Yep. And now what I think is important is I'm going to go back through the same manner that I did when I cut it wet, but I'm going to start to lift it at a 90 and just do a little bit more of my deeper point. Cutting. So now that you're kind of going straight in with the, so you're not trying to change the shape at all, right? No, as long as I'm coming more T to the hair, so mm -hmm. I'm coming more vertical, I'm not taking away that length. I'm just removing a little bit of more internal weight. So your, your fingers are in there, the blade's like T to your finger, the blade is parallel with the hair shaft. Exactly. Uh, it, even the slightest, I think Kelly shared something last week where she showed on our Instagram that if the scissor was slightly diagonal while you did this, you'd cut the whole thing shorter. Yeah. So again, going in T to the finger is super important here. Just taking out weight. I think of cutting like a brick wall. So by coming through and doing my, de my detail, I'm removing bricks from the wall. So we don't want to remove too many all bricks. All in all, it's just a, yeah. <laughs> another brick in the wall. I've seen people, they, they love to come in and they love to just shred. But then they're not really thinking about how, how the result's going to be. So we got to think a little bit. Yeah, I think, you know, putting in a strong shape like you did and breaking it up is a great salon-friendly way. I mean, you can definitely approach this completely visually and freehand from the beginning. But you better be, you know, really on point. You know, and sometimes... When you're on that 10th client in the chair... You haven't had actually, another coffee. Yeah, it actually can be 
easier, and I mean that in a good way, to put in a good balanced shape yeah. and then break it up rather than trying to do the whole thing freehand because it can get away from you really quick if you're not 100% on your game. Sure can. I, I've seen lots of people lose the battle. The, the, uh, the That's not happening today, it. Annalise. Todd is in <laughs> no. full control. No, because he put in a beautiful, simple shape, checked it, yeah. and now he's just really decorating that shape. Yeah. Which, again, is a wonderful way of cutting hair. It's not the only way. You could, I'm sure that there's ways where you could have done this dry, all freehand right from the beginning. But yeah. again, that, that can have its challenges, too. At the moment, I'm embracing kind of new ways to, to think about hair and, and what we're doing. I think when I first started doing hair, I was very like, one way. you got to do it this way, and that's it. And now I'm just so open with the razor, taking classes with Gerard, with Ariana. No pressure, Todd, but one of the legendary educators in our industry, Dwight Miller, is watching. Oh, man. Hey, Dwight. So Welcome. Not, no pressure there, but one of the original, original kind of uh, educators in the mold of who we are today, Dwight Miller, somebody who no pressure. You know, went out there and spread the gospel of great hairdressing, and I think he's still doing it to this day. Uh, great to have you here. We're in San Diego at Gold Comb Salon. Todd just went through this beautiful pattern of layering to create the shag on Annalise. And I was just doing some detail work to finish it up. I think you can tell that everybody really loved this. Yeah. It looks like you're coming in here for your final final, if I'm not wrong. Final final, this is the fun part where you come in through and just kind of place the hair where we want to see it. So with these looks, these layered textured looks, I mean, obviously the cutting is super important, but how important is the product? You know, it's, it's your liquid tool that's, that's gonna make your job easier. And so with these products, it's just, helping to kind of make my job look good. I mean, she looks good because of the haircut, obviously, but then the yeah. products are just gonna Her hair itself. itself looks great right now, too. <laughs> it's got the right amount of shine, the right amount of matte, the right density to it. So, you know, good job choosing the products. Now, did you say this was kind of like a texturizing spray, or what, what yeah, are you using Yeah, this is our texturizer spray, so probably our staple product at Unite. And it's just a fun product to just kind of piece out that work. Awesome. And it's got hold as well. Can, uh, are you happy? Are we finished? Oh, I'm so happy. All yeah, right, let's finished. take off the cape and, and the gown. Make, you got something on underneath there, right? Okay, <laughs> let's get this off. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in and for the ongoing support. Lots of great comments in here about hair, brain, and education. Thank you, Adam, for hosting us. Thank you to my old dear friend, Ariana, for, uh, for doing so many incredible things. Katie Butts here in the background. Thank you, Katie, for coming. Thank you, Annalise. Thank you all for watching, guys. Peace out from San Diego. Todd, you got any closing messages? Just thank you, guys. Uh, let's keep uh, progressing our craft, and thank you to Hairbrain for the community. We'll do it. Voila. Yeah. Bye-bye.